and five, <laughs> four, three. All right, kids, welcome to Precapulous. Hey, right. okay, we have tidbits number two. Damn. Like that. Who's ready? Yeah. Well, are you ready? Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. Did you give out prizes? Can you? Is that bribery? Somebody will be randomly chosen at the end of the show. Is that bribery? Uh, no, yeah, it is. Okay, what? Uh, let's do question A first, which is a flashback. Do you believe we did the first one? Okay, we, uh, we did this problem before, as a matter of fact. And if you had to solve this, who remembers how to get rid of the natural law? Okay. Oh, yeah. I was trying to fool you. I was trying to fool you into saying, oh, just put a bunch of E's in the problem, but at this class, you guys are sharp. Uh, that's like all the classes are sharp. All, all, all. Except for the... No, no, they're, they're all your favorite class, right? Well, all the honors classes. We're a spec sharp. Uh, no, 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 no. I like them all the same. I like them all the same. They're a spec sharp. All you... All right, fill this a little second. Six period. Okay, I'm just messing around. Okay, so uh, here's what you have to do. Uh, so I need to get rid of the natural logs, but you can't put E, E, E. Right? It's too many E's. But only in natural log world can you combine these two together and consolidate, right? All right. So uh, let's see what the next part of this Katie Wright problem is. Stephanie Wright problem is. All right. So what we have to do is when you combine them, you do what with these right here? Okay. Multiplication. Right. Addition becomes multiplication. And when you multiply x times x plus ten, you must use the distributive property. Look at that. Okay. So we put them together. This was back on test uh, three, I think it was. Natural log test. Okay. So you combine them together. Now that I have a natural log and a natural log, I can put in the Now yes, gigantic. Yeah. Okay. Hey, make them gigantic. It doesn't take enough. Is it like three e's in one? All right. So let these look like little tiny exponents up here. All right. You can see that on the camera. Okay. Okay. Uh, now. Uh, we're going to cancel out some, I mean, uh, Steve, what the world are you doing? <laughs> Son? All right. Now, uh, drop the natural logs. Okay. X squared plus 10X and absolute value of R is equals 24. All right. Now, there are two times in math when you get a plus or minus. <laughs> if you take any kind of, or let's say any kind of even root of both sides, or if you have something solute, absolute. absolute values, right? Something solute. Okay. If you have absolute value bars, because if I take this x squared plus 10x and set it aside, if I took it and set it aside and replaced it with the number 24, is that a true statement? Mm -hmm. yes. Or if I replaced it with negative 24. Okay, take this out, take negative 24, put it back here. Ooh, that's also a true statement. Absolute value of negative 24 is also 24. Okay? So those are both valid statements. They have two cases. All right? Now to solve these trinomials. What would you do right here? All right, subtract 24 from both sides. Add in. Hope oh, that's factual. If it's not factual, we'll have to pull out our old buddy, actually our old nemesis. The quadratic formula. Well, it is on the top right. Okay. Oh, there it is up there. Well, I hope it's factual. Let's see. All right. This one over here. X squared plus 10x. What would you do? Plus 4. 24. I mean, that. The whole goal is to, that's fine, get it equal to 0. That's the goal, right? And those are you two trinomials. I wonder if that one's factual. Yeah, one of them is. Boy, that's a, if one of them is, usually the other one's not. Or they're both not. They're both quadratic forms. Okay? Maybe, maybe we get them both to be factual. It's pretty hard to do, though. It's pretty rare. It's pretty rare. Maybe it'll happen today. Right. Hopefully so. I will tell you that to get these two trinomials to be factorable, to get them both simultaneously factorable with the plus and the minus is the hardest thing to handcraft. 
in all of pre-calculus, in all of calculus, of all the problems I have to make, this is the hardest one to handle. Because, no, wait, I haven't gotten the punchline yet, but they're, so, but they're so rare. To actually find the one that works both ways is so rare. To find, right? and that's where that's we're leading today. We're leading up to that. Sorry. Okay, now, uh, if you want to, for fun, off to the side, you could do a little something called the sieve of Eratosthenes. We learned that uh, actually in the first uh, section, didn't we? Right? So the Eratosthenes. All right, and that is this. What is the square root of 24, or how did it start? We did it on a calculator. 4.9. 4. Something pretty high, right? Because it's pretty close to square root of 25. Okay? So if it starts with four points and you want to do the factors of 24, wouldn't you just say one goes in, two goes in, three goes in, four goes in, you're halfway done. Right? Because remember, the mirror is not the middle of 24, which is 12. The mirror is the square root. So once you've done up to the square root, the others just fall in line. Four times six, three times eight. Two times, wow. well, and one time, 24. Okay, and it just goes right to the square root. And that's that old sieve trick. So, uh, for fun, you can list all the factors. It makes it kind of faster when you have to do this. So, let's see if we can get something to multiply to be negative 24, but add to be 10. Any 12 combinations? 12 and 2. Okay, hey, this is a good combination. 12 and okay. 2. 12 and 2, if, as long as it is x plus 12 and x minus, minus 2, that works. That one's factorable. So that means the other one's probably the quadratic one. Though, it? No. Hey! Oh my gosh. Uh, you know, heart attack one these days. <laughs> you all right? Don't be Joe. All right. Now, again, a combination that multiplies to be 24, so it's either this, this, that, or that, but then adds to be positive 10. Well, let's see here. Oh, look at that. The 6 and the 4. Plus 4 plus 6. How about that? So there were two pairs in here that made a 10 with subtraction or addition. Very rare. Very rare. I'd like to find some more. Oh, well, let's do one and two theorems. You know what? We may have to. Because if I have one of these on the uh, worksheet. No, oh, yeah, sure. Go ahead. Yeah, if there's, a, if there's a one on the worksheet, I have to do another one for the sample test and another one for the real test. All right? So let's investigate here. All right, solutions. What would the four solutions be for these two? For this nice negative 12, negative 12, negative 12, negative 12 six. positive 2. Uh, negative 4, negative 6. Okay. Four solutions. All right, they all work? All done. All good. All right. Now, let me tell you this. If you were to change this problem to x squared and minus 10x, and plus or minus 24, then those are also a factor. Okay? The one we had last time, this one we just did, was x squared plus 10x plus or minus 24. Right? And both the plus case and the minus case, they both factor. Okay? If you change that sign, it really doesn't affect the problem that much. It still works. All it does is change your solutions into, well, and then that's all it does. So you can change that sign if you want, if you were to create a problem. Okay? So when you combine all that together, basically you have the plus case or the minus case, it all works, it's all packed. So, okay, let's go <coughs> to, it's time for History Corner. What do we call yeah, last time, History Corner? Something like that. Okay, and now it's time for History Corner. Let's start with a date. Factoring first used to solve equations such as x squared plus 7x plus 12 equals 0. That's a pretty, uh, pretty easy equation to factor, isn't it? Matter of fact, what does uh, x squared plus 7x plus 12 factor into? Plus 4 x x plus 4 x plus 3? Okay, that's an easy one. How long ago were people factoring to solve equations?